Hello, this is Brother David Martin, pastor of Solid Rock Baptist Church in Bartlett, Tennessee. And um, today we're going to do a um, brief examination of uh, my favorite study Bibles. Um, and I'll give you a little list of what they are here. Um, my favorite study Bibles, the ones that I use uh, more than any, is the Schofield Reference Bible. Not the new one, but the old Schofield Reference Bible, as it's called. The King James Study Bible, put out by Thomas Nelson Publishers. The Life Application Study Bible, the Henry Morris Study Bible, and the Ruckman Reference Bible. So these five Bibles here uh, I use uh, uh, on a regular basis to go to when I find something difficult to understand or just want to get another take on it and just uh, to uh, see what someone else said about a verse or a passage of scripture or whatever. I use uh, in, these five more than any of them. So that's them right there. Now. We're going to talk about them, and then we're going to look at uh, some samples uh, from them just to show you uh, what they're like, uh, in case you'd like to get one. And uh, uh, so here we go. Um, the first one is the uh, Old Schofield Reference Bible, this one right here, the Old Schofield Reference Bible. It doesn't say old on it. It just says the Schofield Reference Bible. Uh, there is another one that's been put out called the uh, New Schofield Reference Bible. Um, and uh, that one is not the one that we're talking about. Uh, the Old Schofield, uh, put out by the Oxford Press, was published in 1909. Uh, also 1917, it was copyrighted. Uh, the New Schofield is uh, copyrighted 1967, I believe. And uh, that one is not really a King James Bible. Let me just say this. All the study Bibles that I'm recommending are King James versions. King James versions. Um, and uh, the uh, Schofield Reference Bible was uh, put out by C. I. Schofield, um, who was a congregational pastor. He was influenced by the Plymouth Brethren. Uh, he's dispensational, and um, he uh, um, was premillennial, and um, he was the editor of this Bible. Uh, there are several men that were on the committee of the Schofield Reference Bible, and uh, so it's a committee put together Bible. Not only that, um, you have the King James Study Bible, another one. This is the King James Study Bible, and it is uh, put out by uh, Thomas Nelson Publishers, the King James Study Bible. And uh, I like this one a lot. Um, it's uh, put out in 1988, and uh, it was originally called the Liberty Annotated Study Bible, put out by Liberty University, uh, which was Jerry Falwell's uh, Bible School, and uh, still running today. Um, people on the committee of that one was Jerry Falwell, Ed Henson, Elmer Towns, and others. Uh, people from Tennessee Temple University, Bob Jones University, uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, so it's, it's a conservative Bible is what it is. Just like the Schofield Bible is a conservative Bible. Then there's the Life Application Bible. And that's in this one right here, the Life Application Bible. And... Um, Put out by Tyndall. That's the Life Application Study Bible. Put out in 1986, uh, and uh, that's what it came out. Uh, contributors to this one, uh, they say that Youth for Christ was uh, very prominent in many of the uh, comments and uh, uh, to this Bible. Um, and uh, so anyway, it's also a committee put together um, from different uh, Bible schools and seminaries and things like that. And then you have the uh, Henry Morris Study Bible, the Henry Morris Study Bible. I like this one as well. I just picked this up about two years ago, and I like it uh, very much. Um, and uh, it's not been out. It's been out for probably about 15 years, maybe 20 at the most. I'm assuming uh, it was uh, put out by Henry Morris, who is the founder of what's called the Institution of Creation Research in San Diego, California. Uh, he's called the father of a modern day uh, scientific creationism. Uh, he's uh, one of his most famous works was called the Genesis Flood. A great book um, that talks about the flood, uh, gives all the uh, evidence for it from science, and uh, corroborates that with, uh, and of course, the, it corroborates the Bible's account of the flood. And uh, so it's a very good study book. So, but his Bible uh, goes through and has a lot of scientific notes along the, uh, the lines of creation, so I like that. And then there is the Ruckman Reference Bible, uh, put out by... Uh, uh, Dr. Peter Ruckman of Pensacola Bible Institute uh, down in Pensacola, Florida. And uh, this one here is uh, 
uh, uh, put out by him, and he's the only contributor to it. Uh, so when you look at these study Bibles, uh, some things about them that you need to consider is this, and this is some things that I've considered, and of course, in looking at these, and I would ask you, uh, recommend that you consider these things also, and that is you want uh, study Bibles that are conservative, evangelical, uh, fundamental, I would even say baptistic, uh, non-charismatic, and non-Catholic. Um, and these Bibles fit that category. Also, you want uh, study Bibles that I would recommend would be those that are uh, premillennial, dispensational, um, and also believe in eternal security. Um, and so these Bibles all represent that uh, uh, thinking, that uh, kind of theology. Very conservative, very evangelical, even fundamental. Uh, so I would recommend those. Uh, some of the work of committees, uh, some of individuals, um, or an individual editor who supervised a committee. For instance, uh, the Ruckman Reference Bible is uh, simply Dr. Ruckman's Bible notes from all his commentaries. So if you don't have all his commentaries and you want to uh, have maybe a compendium of those things, his Reference Bible will have all those things in it. Uh, then the Henry Morris Study Bible uh, is put up by Henry Morris, uh, not a committee, but just uh, believe it is just him. And uh, it's his notes on the uh, Old and New Testaments in the Study Bible. Very good notes. And then you have the uh, King James, or sorry, the Lap Application Study Bible. This is put out by a committee, which means that there's an editor and that there is a number of people who contributed to it. Um, then you have the uh, King James Study Bible. Also, this is a uh, committee. Uh, Bible, that is, it was put together by a committee, and also the Schofield Reference Bible. Uh, Dr. Schofield was the um, editor, but he had about 10 or so uh, members of the committee that contributed uh, to the notes of that Bible. Um, now, um, all, um, uh, like any good Bible study or, or study Bible, um, have notes that deal with uh, various doctrinal, historical, uh, prophetic, archaeological, uh, devotional, and practical applications. All these contain those. So it's a they're very it's a very broad uh, view of the Bible uh, from different aspects. Um, and uh, all like any good reference Bible uh, have similar formats. And by that I mean that they're all put together the same way, the same um, uh, format. Like I said, uh, is usually followed. Um, I don't know who the first one to put one out. I, mean, I remember Thompson Chain uh, came out very early, and also the uh, Schofield Reference Bible. And most Bibles uh, follow the format that you find in a Schofield Reference Bible. Um, they have they have what's called center column references. So if you have a Bible, uh, you'll have uh, the page, and then you'll have in the column there, the center column over here, over here. Here we go. Uh, you'll have verses um, that are tied into uh, these verses here. So in the center column, what you'll have is uh, uh, cross-references, cross-reference verses. And then um, they also have, uh, many of them have a chain in them. Uh, the Schofield Bible is a chain reference Bible. You'll hear that term used, chain reference. What that means is, is that, for instance, in Genesis chapter 1, uh, they'll have a uh, the first verse in a chain that goes through the, throughout the entire Bible to the end of the New Testament, back all, all the way to Revelation. And they'll start you off with Genesis, say, 1 1, and they'll give you a reference that deals with the creation uh, next in line, and the next one, and the next one, etc., all through the Old Testament, and then through the New Testament, and then it comes to the last one. And in the back of uh, the Schofield Reference Bible, uh, when you look under, I think it's the topical index or the subject index. Um, it'll show you the first verse in the chain and the last verse in the chain. And then you go to the first verse in the chain, say it's creation, you go to Genesis 1-1, one, one, and then Genesis 1-1 one, one will have a reference that says, okay, go to this verse, and you go to that verse. Then that verse will have another verse that says, go to this verse. And it indicates in there that it's part of that chain. So this chain may have 10 verses in it. It may have 25 verses in it. So it's a very good way to study the Bible uh, from, uh, from the beginning to the end and throughout. Uh, they also have footnotes. They all have footnotes in them. And for instance, the Schofield Reference Bible here has a footnote here in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, here's a footnote right there. You see that footnote right down here? See, right over here, right there, the footnote. Deal with one verse. And it gives you uh, some uh, thoughts and ideas and references to that. 
Um, and then uh, uh, they also many of them have outlines uh, to uh, every book of the Bible as an introduction. Uh, they'll have profiles in them on different people in the Bible. Uh, the Life Application Bible is good about that. It'll have an application. It'll, it'll have a uh, biography of Adam and then of Eve and then of Noah, of uh, Joseph, and then different Bible characters throughout the scriptures there that are very good. And then they all have, most of them will have maps in the back as well uh, dealing with uh, Israel and uh, um, the Middle East and the Bible lands and things like that. Um, and then they all mostly have concordances in them also. Concordance is simply a uh, um, a way to you look up basically you look up words. Say you want to look up uh, any word here. Say for instance uh, ransom right here. That word ransom, okay. And then they give you all the references, or at least a number of references, in the Bible that deal with that that have that word in it. And this is only a partial concordance. Uh, you can find uh, the uh, many people are familiar with the Strong's concordance uh, has every word in the Bible, including the these and the a's and the ands. Uh, then you have the Young's. Uh, Concordance, which is another format, which uh, I prefer that over Strong's. Uh, and then you can go to Bible Gateway, and there you can just type in a word or a phrase, and it'll give you every one of them in the Bible, and it's free. Uh, but every Bible does have a concordance, at least most of them do. And uh, they might have a topical index, they might have a dictionary in there that gives you um, the definitions of names, uh, city names, uh, people's names, whatever it might be, things like that, are also in some of these. Now, let me say this, not every note in a reference Bible is correct. Um, of course, the notes are not inspired. Um, none of, the only thing that's inspired in these study Bibles is the text of the Bible. And personally, I and people like me believe the King James Version is the Word of God. So I would say this, wherever the, um, wherever the study Bible contradicts the King James text, you stay with the King James text. Uh, wherever it removes a verse from the King James text or says it shouldn't belong, it says it doesn't belong there or it shouldn't be there. For instance, uh, um, I think uh, Schofield in 1 John 5, 7 says that those verses probably ought not be there. Uh, well, we will we'll just basically delete his note and we'll keep the King James text is what we'll do. So wherever they contradict the Bible, the King James Bible, uh, we don't uh, follow them that far. We, we stop there. We, we will we'll keep with the King James Bible and not go with the notes. So again, all the notes are not inspired. They're not all correct. But most of them are right. Most of them are very helpful. Um, and so uh, the notes aren't inspired. The Bible text is. But the notes are helps. They're helps. Um, now we're going to do this. We're going to look at um, one, a sample. We're going to look at the introduction to John and... John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. And we're going to look at each of these study Bibles and just see what they have to say and what the notes look like, just so you can see a comparison here. Uh, look at uh, John chapter 1. Well, if you don't have these Bibles, you can't, so just follow along with me, right? So John chapter 1 here. Uh, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So that's the first three verses of the book of John. And so in the scope of the reference Bible, you have this. You have, an, you have an introduction here, an introduction right there. I'll leave it up there in case you want to stop and look at it. There it is. There's his introduction to the book of John right there. And there's the verses. At the bottom of the page is um, a note and some, some notes on John chapter 1, verse number 1 there. Okay? So that's what that looks like. In his introduction, he says that the fourth gospel was written by the Apostle John. This has been questioned on critical grounds, but on the same grounds of legal scholarship, the early date and uh, Johannian authorship have been maintained. And he gives you the date of the uh, gospel of John between 85 and 90 AD is what they believe it was written. Um, and then he gives you the theme of the book. Uh, and then he gives you um, the seven natural divisions of the book as he sees them. He gives you a prologue. He gives you the witness of John the Baptist. Then he gives you the account of the public ministry of Christ. Then he gives you the private ministry of Christ to his disciples. And then he shows you the sacrifice of Christ. Then he deals with the manifestation of Christ and the resurrection. And then there's the epilogue uh, after the resurrection. And that's how he has it there. And he says the events uh, recorded in this book cover a period of seven years. And then he gives you dates here. 
uh, Scofield gives you a date. See at the top of the center column there, he's got AD 26 on that page over here, um, dealing with when John the Baptist shows up and is preaching. So he'll give you dates like that. Um, down here in the bottom here, he says this in the note, um, John 1.1, 1, 1, beginning was the word. And he says the Greek word logos, uh, the Greek term means a thought or a concept, the expression or utterance of that thought. As a designation of Christ, therefore, logos is particular, peculiar because in him are embodied all the treasures of the divine wisdom and the collective thought of God. He gives you some references. And he is from eternity, but especially in his incarnation, the utterance or expression of the person and thought of the deity. In the being, person, work of Christ, deity is told out. And he gives you a note there. Okay, that's Schofield on John chapter 1. And then you have, here we have the uh, King James Study Bible. And um, here is the introduction to John in the King James Study Bible. Uh, Schofield had like just a short paragraph. Look at that there. King James Study Bible has that as introduction. And then he gives you the outline of the book of John there. Verse by verse, chapter by chapter, section by section. Um, really, I think as far as a study Bible is concerned, this is my favorite, the King James Study Bible. Um, he says here in the introduction, John's gospel is noticeably distinct from the other three gospels. In attempting to explain the differences, we should note three factors. And then he gives you the three factors in dealing with the book of John uh, that bear on this issue. Then the authorship. Unlike Paul's epistles, the text of this gospel does not name its author. However, John's gospel was readily included in early collections of the New Testament canon. This means that it was believed to be written by a credible and accepted person, such as a disciple. Tradition. The testimony of early Christian writers almost unanimously attributes it to John, the son of Zebedee. Uh, and then he gives you some other reasonings why this is John is the author. Then he gives you the date. He says about 85 A.D. And uh, it was written while John was at Ephesus. John was the pastor of the church at Ephesus, which is uh, one of the church, seven churches in Revelation chapter 1. Then he gives you the purpose of the writing. This is clearly stated in chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. And there are three key words. And then he gives you the three key words in the book of uh, uh, John. Signs, um, life, and the word believe. Those words are used many times, and those are the, that's the emphasis of the book of John. Uh, then he gives you the content. Uh, then he goes and gives you an outline of the book of John, uh, which is a great outline. And here's the outline of the book of John in, your, in the King James Study Bible right here. There's the outline. It's a great outline. So this one here has got plenty of notes and lots of good center column references. I found more uh, good center column references in the King James Study Bible than any of them. Uh, so I'll highly recommend this one. And now here's uh, John chapter 1. And uh, here's some notes on the very first couple of verses right here. Here you go, right there, uh, right over here is uh, the verse is dealing with uh, uh, John. There you go. All right. And so um, he gives you notes on on verses 1 to 18. Uh, talks about the introduction. Uh, then he talks about verse 1. In the beginning, uh, God was there. And he In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Um, it signifies the perfect fellowship between the God, God the Father and God the Son in eternity. Um and then he says here, the word was God. He comments on that. Just as the previous expression, the word was with God, emphasizes distinction of the Godhead, this phrase stresses the essential unity. Um, and he gives you some things about the grammar and stuff like that. Uh, he also has a note here on the logos, which uh, Schofield referred to. Uh, one of the most important titles of Christ is logos. That's the Greek word for the word word. Uh, the idea behind this title embodied God's revelation of himself to humanity. Uh, scholars debate whether John borrowed this term from the Greeks or the Jews. If the term is Greek, there may be numerous philosophical implications. If Hebrew, that is Jewish, it may refer to wisdom or the law of God. Um, the, Jesus is called the Word of God, and the phrase occurs over 1,200 times in uh, the Word of God, in the Old Testament, that is. And uh, so he's the incarnate and the inspired Word of God. And so he gives you some notes, and then he gives you an illustration and an application to it. So, uh, but again, uh, the center column references are great on this. The outlines are great. Uh, it's got really good notes in here. And um, 
if uh, I was to give a Bible to a new convert, I think I'd give them a King James Study Bible. Um, and then here's the uh, Life Application Study Bible once again. We'll look at it. And what it says here in John, it's got another large introduction. Here's his introduction to the book of John right here in the Life Application Bible. You see that there. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. And um, this one here, um, it's, it, it, every introduction to every book gives you the vital statistics. It talks about the purpose of the book, the author of the book, uh, the date it was written, key verses, key people, key places, etc. Then it gives you a blueprint, what he calls a blueprint, and they get, that's the outline of the book of John. And here they divide it into three sections. Um, Schofield ref, uh, divided into seven sections. So whatever works for you... <laughs> As far as that's concerned, you know, everybody has a little different take, a little different look at some things, and a little different perspe excuse me, perspective on things. And uh, so uh, you can learn and glean from everybody. Um, and then this one also has mega themes, mega themes. And it tells you the mega theme. What's the mega theme? What's the main themes of, of this particular book? Well, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, eternal life, belief, uh, Holy Spirit, resurrection. He gives you an explanation, and then he talks about the importance of that um, that theme of the uh, of the book, and now here is uh, John chapter one verses one to three, and here is uh, the notes there. Here, right here we go. And so look at that. You've got uh, half the page is scripture. The other half on the bottom there is uh, is the notes. So there's lots of notes in the life application Bible as well, and uh, many of them are devotional and practical applications, but there are good notes on history, on archaeology, on um, doctrine. Um, it's a very good study Bible also. It's very in-depth. And uh, for instance, in John chapter 1, he's got three notes, three paragraphs on John chapter 1. Uh, he's got two paragraphs on, on verse 3. Um, and so uh, anyway, again, he says here in John 1, he says, what does John mean by the word? The word was a term used by theologians and philosophers, both Hebrew and Greek, in many different ways. In Hebrew scripture, the word was an agent of creation, the source of God's message to his people through the prophets, and God's law, his standard for holiness. And he goes on, he discusses the cultural meaning of that word, with the Greeks and this and whatever. Okay? Um, and then, um, let's see, another note he says here in John chapter 1 is this. Uh, what Jesus taught and what he did are tied inseparably to who he is. John shows Jesus is fully human and fully God. Although Jesus took upon himself full humanity and lived as a man, he never ceased to be the eternal God who has always existed, the creator and sustainer of all things, and the source of eternal life. This is the truth about Jesus and the foundation of all truth. So that's a good note there. So the um, Life Application Bible put out by Tyndale Publishers is also a very good book. Um, I would give that to a new convert as well. Um, the... King James Study Bible is more doctrinal. Uh, the life application is a little more practical. And so you might want to have both of them. Uh, and nothing against that. You can't, if you're a preacher, you can't have too many study Bibles. Uh, if you're a Christian, you probably can't have too many Bibles if, you're real, if you really love the Word of God. So you might as well get all of them <laughs> uh, if you don't have any of them yet. And now here is uh, the Henry Morris Study Bible. The Henry Morris Study Bible. And here is his uh, introduction to the book of John. Uh, this, is an, this is a large print Bible. And so there is uh, John, and there is his uh, introduction. One whole page there is an introduction to the book of John. And then on the other page, um, verses 1 to 3 is almost a whole page. Verses 1 to 3, almost a whole page there of notes on this. So uh, these are like commentaries. Uh, let's see, um, in the beginning, here's his note. It is significant that the Apostle John began his gospel with the words in the beginning. He obviously intended that his record should start with the same words as Genesis, that is, with creation. And he gives some things about that, some, some comparisons. Um, then on verse 1 again, the word was God. Here's his note. Uh, this is a very strong assertion that Jesus is God, speaking of the deity. The eternal word, who is made to be man, is God, not merely a God, as some have alleged, and is the same God who created heaven and earth in the beginning. In fact, he is the only true God, according to 1 John 5.20, 
who was there in the beginning. Um, and then he has some more notes on, uh, um, on verses 1 to 3 as well on that page there. And so uh, this is a, a very good Bible as well. Um, so again, um, sometimes you might have to have several study Bibles to look at some things. I, as, a, as a pastor, as a Bible teacher, um, I'll come across some stuff and I'll read it. I think, you know, I, I know what that means, but I just can't put it in words. I know what that means, but I just don't know exactly how to explain that. Uh, and I saw so I look at one of these study Bibles. And I said, well, how do they, uh, how do they uh, approach that verse? How do they explain that verse? Uh, how do they, you know, put it into a language that other people can, that we can understand? Um, and so I get a lot of information out of here that helps me to be able to articulate um, what I believe. There's some things I, I know I believe in my heart and my head, but sometimes uh, I just can't get it out in words. And so I've got to find someone else who can help me to explain that, and I'll take their explanation to whatever and use that. And uh, the reason they put these Bibles out is for you to do that. That's what they did that for. So give credit to who credit's due and say, you know, I was looking in the, in the uh, uh, this particular study Bible, and they said this. So give credit to whose credit due. Um, but uh, again, now here's the Ruckman reference Bible, the Ruckman reference Bible. All right, and um, we'll look at the uh, introduction to John. Here's his introduction to John right here. There's his introduction to John right there. It takes up quite a bit of space there. And uh, let's see what he says here. Uh, the author of the book of John, uh, John, I'm sorry, the author of the book is John Zebedee, the brother of James. John identifies himself on five occasions in this gospel, and he gives the verses. Uh, altogether, John writes five books in the New Testament, the gospel, three epistles, and the book of Revelation. John wrote his gospel sometime after the destruction of Jerusalem between AD 88 and AD 90. It has 21 chapters, 879 verses, and 19,094 words. Uh, the style and vocabulary of the gospel match the three epistles that John wrote later. John's favorite expression, I am, shows up again and again in the writing, and he gives you some verses. Uh, John presents Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Instead of tracing Christ's human genealogy back to Adam, as Luke does, or tracing his Jew Jew Jewish genealogy back to Abraham, as Matthew does, John traces Christ's genealogy back before Genesis 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Um, and then, uh, let's see here, uh, on uh, his notes at the bottom, his uh, footnotes, uh, he has only one footnote in the first couple of verses, and that's on chapter 3, I'm sorry, verse number 3, which says, all things are made by him. Um, he says this, he says, H.G. Uh, Wells, the English historian, said back in 1940, we do not know how life on earth began. Uh, apostates always use the first person plural includes you in their ignorance. He meant he did not know, nor does any Darwinian evolutionist. They all say that it began uh, on earth accidentally with the odds against it, according to biology and genetics, being one out of 10 with 13,000 zeros after it. In other words, he's referring to the uh, statistical probability of the, of, the, of the universe coming into uh, existence on its own is uh, pretty much, uh, it's, it, it just can't happen. It's impossible. And so anyway, he's referencing there about how that the world and the people of the world will uh, you know, deny this. But the Bible tells us who he is and uh, how the world came about. And so that's, the, that's his reference. That's, that's his take on John chapter 1 there as well. So again, these are um, five of my favorite study Bibles. And uh, let me just give you two verses here uh, as we close this out. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, verse number 15, it's a verse that we should all know and we should all practice. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There it is in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and uh, verse number 15. If I can get it here on the, on the camera, on the uh, camera here. Uh, there we go. Study. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, as far as I know, the only Bible uh, that tells you to study in that verse there is the King James Bible. I don't even think the New King James says study there. Maybe I'm mistaken on that, but all modern versions remove the word study and replace it with another word. Uh, the only um, command in the Bible to, st to study the Bible is 2 Timothy 2.15, and it's only found in the King James Version of the Bible. 
That should tell you something about uh, the importance of which version you use. Uh, then look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 also, same book, same chapter, and look at um, what he tells uh, Timothy here. Another thing he tells him is this in verse 2. He said, the things that thou hast heard of me, as he says to Timothy, the things I've taught you, the Apostle Paul, the thing I've taught you uh, among many, uh, I'm sorry, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. He says, the things that you've heard and learned from me, and he says, among many witnesses. In other words, Paul taught them publicly. Uh, he taught them um, um, as a group, and uh, he taught them the Word of God because they were faithful. He said, commit what you've learned to other faithful people who will be able to teach others also. In other words, uh, we're to learn and to pass on to somebody else that we know is going to pass on to somebody else who's going to pass it on to somebody else. And that's how the message gets out. Um, and so these study Bibles, um, this is the efforts of uh, people like Dr. Ruckman, uh, Dr. Morris, Dr. Schofield, uh, the folks with the Life Application Bible Committee, the folks with the King James Study Bible Committee. Uh, what they're doing is, is they're trying to pass on to you what they know, what they've learned of the Word of God. And they're trying to get it into your hands. And so uh, we're blessed with many uh, study Bibles on the market today. But again, these are my favorite, and I use them a lot, and I recommend them to you as well. And so here they are again. Um, the Schofield Reference Bible, again, the old one, not the new one. The King James Study Bible by Thomas Nelson Publishers. The Life Application Study Bible. The Henry Moore Study Bible. And the Rutland Reference Bible. So anyway, I hope that uh, this has been a blessing to you. And if you're looking for a study Bible, I hope that you will uh, uh, consider these and take a look at them. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to... Uh, uh, post a remark out there with a question or something like that if you'd like. But anyway, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope that you'll get in the Word of God and study it.